50 years, Christians around the world have profited from listening to the preaching of the late Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Born in the last month of the 19th century, he was a Welsh medical doctor converted to Christ in the midst of his medical pursuits, eventually laying aside a prestigious medical career for the Christian ministry. Dr. Lloyd-Jones is widely regarded as the greatest preacher of the 20th century. And probably the most prominent reason for this is the way that God's anointing rested upon him, enabling him to so preach and teach the Word of God that listeners were regularly brought into a real encounter with God through His Word. The one thing he tells you to be concerned about is this, is your own soul, your relationship to God. And it's something which is intensely personal. You see, he talks about entering into a straight gate. And I always think that this straight gate is not like we used to have it on the pictures that the old people used to hang on their walls. I think this straight gate was a turnstile. And you know the point about a turnstile, don't you? It only admits one person at a time. You can't go two of you together into a turnstile. Husband and wife can't go together. Father and mother can't go together. Parents and children into the turnstile one by one. That's the straight gate. You and God. Your parents may have been the most saintly people that Pensacola has ever known. That doesn't save you. Every one of us has got to come to a private, personal, individual meeting with God. We can't ride into heaven on the back of saintly forebears. We can't be saved in nations or churches or towns or districts or communities. Every one of us has to come alone, face to face with God, personal. He narrows it down to this. The eyes of the fool, says the Old Testament word, are on the ends of the earth. And people are talking tonight about the war in Vietnam and this problem and the other and the church is talking about all these things and people are saying God ought to do this and that. My dear friend, those are not the questions. The question is, do you know God? The book by Martin Lloyd-Jones, titled Spiritual Depression, started out as a series of 24 sermons preached on Sunday mornings at Westminster Chapel, London. The original recordings have been digitized and are now available from the Martin Lloyd-Jones Recordings Trust. In 1965, these sermons were gathered together and edited for publication by Dr. Lloyd-Jones, now consisting of 21 chapters, generally coinciding with the sermons originally delivered. In the sermons, and on the printed page, there is a remarkable and rare depth of application. In our days, there are many people talking about the need to recover the doctrine of the sufficiency of Scripture for the Christian life. But Dr. Lloyd-Jones's treatment of depression demonstrated that belief in a greater way than most have done. These great arguments of the epistles, this tremendous presentation of truth. The gospel isn't a partial thing. He takes in the whole of men, the whole of life, the whole of history, the whole of world. He tells you about creation. He tells you about the final judgment and everything in between. It's a complete, a whole view of life. And I'm saying this morning that many are unhappy in the Christian life because they've never realized it. They have never realized that it is a way of life. That it caters for the whole of a man's life and covers every eventuality in his experience. That there is no aspect or phase of his life and of his activity, but that the gospel has something to say about it. The whole of life must come under it because it's all inclusive. The gospel is meant to control and to govern everything in our life. And if we don't realize that, we are certain sooner or later to find ourselves in an unhappy condition. You and I, and to me this is one of the great discoveries in the Christian life, I shall never forget the release that realizing this for the first time brought to me. You and I must never look at our past lives 
we must never look at any sin in our past life in such a way except it should lead us to praise God and to magnify his grace as Paul did. I challenge you with that. If you look at your past or anything in your past and are depressed by it, you're failing miserably as a Christian. That doesn't mean that I say you should look at your past and say nothing. No, no, you must do it as Paul did. I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But does he stop at that? Does he sit in his corner and say, I'm unworthy to be a preacher of the gospel? No, he says the exact opposite. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. When Paul looks at that past, he doesn't sit down in a corner and say, I'm unfit to preach, I'm not worthy to be a Christian. Alas, alack, I'm such a vile man, I've done such terrible things. Not at all. What it does to Paul is to make him praise God. He magnifies the grace, listen, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That's the way to look at your past. So if you look at your past and are just depressed, it means you're listening to the devil. But if you look at that past and say, yes, unfortunately it was true. I was blinded by the God of this world. I did it in ignorance and unbelief. But thank God his grace was more abundant and abounding. It was more than sufficient. And his love and mercy came upon me in such a way. It's all forgiven and I'm a new man. Then it's all right. That's the way I say to look at the past. And if we don't do that, I'm almost tempted to say that we deserve to be miserable. Why believe the devil instead of believing God? Rise up out of it, my friend, and realize the truth about yourself as in Christ and one with him, and that all the past, whatever it may be, has gone and has been blotted out once and forever. Let us remember that it is sin to doubt God's word. It is sin to allow the past which God has dealt with to rob us of our joy and our usefulness in the present and in the future. It isn't the time of your entry into the kingdom that matters, but the fact that you're in the kingdom. That's the thing that matters. It isn't even the mode or the manner of your conversion that matters. What matters is the fact that you're converted. But people will sit down and worry about the way they've come in. They haven't got somebody else's experience, or it didn't happen in this precise way or manner. Time, mode, manner, method, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are you in? If you're in, well, rejoice in it and forget that you were ever out. The time element is quite unimportant.